Hello world, Jay Sherm here. Today's special guest for Startup Journey is Justin Goldston. He's a PhD professor of project and supply chain management at Penn State University. Justin, thank you so much for coming onto my podcast. I appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me. No problem. I checked out your TED Talks. You have a lot to say about blockchain technology. Just so the, the people listening, they know exactly what blockchain technology is in about a minute or less. What is blockchain technology? So blockchain technology is, so people, people relate blockchain to Bitcoin, but I primarily look at blockchain from an industrial perspective, where, where blockchain is the underlying technology in which Bitcoin is, is built upon. And within the industry, blockchain will increase the transparency of transactions among businesses. So that's the area of blockchain in which I focus on. Cool. And so when you say blockchain technology, for someone who's never heard of it, what are the blocks in blockchain technology? So the blocks are essentially the transactions. So, so if I were to, if I were to, so if you look at Bitcoin, so if I perform a, a Bitcoin transaction, it's going to essentially create a block and that block has, and, and, and everyone, so uh, the, the blockchain network, if you will, is is decentralized so that means when a blockchain when a, when a blockchain transaction is created it has to reach consensus to say to, so for everyone within that blockchain network to say okay this is valid okay this is valid okay this is valid okay it checks out now if anyone tries to tamper with that particular block it's immediately identified so that's why you hear people say that the blockchain's immutable and it can't be changed because if someone tries to change it, everyone sees it. Right. And that was actually one of my questions was, is it possible to modify the data once it is written in a block? And you're saying it's not. It's, it's not. And, but, but in some, and, and it, it depends on what kind of blockchain you this created. Because so there's, is there an example of a blockchain that can be modified? So there's some blockchain, there's some blockchain, uh, networks that have what we call oracles. So, so if everyone, if all of the actors within that blockchain network, you know, is, is aware of the oracle, and everyone says, okay, the oracle can, yes, this particular transaction is corrupt, if you will, or for whatever reason something's wrong with that block, that with that particular block, then the oracle can actually go in and, and make that and make that modification. Now, now these particular networks are are small if you will it's not it would be almost impossible for for the bitcoin blockchain to have an oracle with all those transactions that are occurring in in a, in a particular uh in a particular uh situation and what type of records can be kept in a blockchain are, are there like restrictions for the type of record you can put in in a blockchain so there are it depends on the industry you know, so so you're going to have you're going to have some type you're going to have some kinds of industries where you may you may have some issues in in creating uh, uh, based on based on the type of like for for example healthcare, you know there there would be some issues in putting in putting you know healthcare transactions on the blockchain for example because of the HIPAA laws and things exactly, like that exactly. So how do you get um, around that? Well, <laughs> can you get around that? Reg so that's, 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 another, that's another discussion that we're currently having within the industry in that, you know, what are, what are the, what are the, you know, the ethical concerns in terms of blockchain? Because we're having those discussions now with artificial intelligence. You know, what are the ethical concerns? What are the AI codes of conduct? What are the blockchain codes of conduct? You know, right. because, because these technologies are changing so quickly. They're evolving so quickly there's not regulations in place for some of these transactions. There's not, tra there's not regulations in place for some of these, some of these, some of these use cases that are, that are arising. At, yeah. I, I know some people who are terrified. You're saying that, that you're, you're talking about the social implications. I know people who are terrified of blockchain because they feel as though there are social limits because once you put something on a chain, it, it doesn't expire, right? So let's say you, right. you're, you're arrested and your criminal record is put on the blockchain. Now you can delete it but it's still in the previous blocks. So it's like there forever, right? So, I mean, what are the social implications? Are there limits? 
Yep. So, so, and that's the thing with the with the blockchain that's immutable, it can't go away. And so, I'm I'm primarily in the, in the supply chain industry, and that's why some organizations are hesitant to join blockchains because they have so much to hide, you know, and and things like that. Well, that's not and, good. <laughs> and, but that's 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 the industry. Right. You no, know, and and I'm 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 having a put I'm having a push, especially in a supply chain industry, where it needs to be more transparent. You know, and and so we have I do a lot of the discussions on sustainability. You know, for and, and sustainability is a big thing within the, within the startup within the startup realm. You know, where you know we're sitting out all of these sustainability reports and things like that, but those sustainability reports aren't audited. You know, so if we blend if we combine blockchain with the sustainability reports, now they're immutable. Yes, you have all these great reports, prove it. Put it on the blockchain. Now we can see if, 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 it's, if it's really valid or not. So you mentioned that they, they don't, maybe they don't trust it or they say that they're afraid to trust it. So why is blockchain so trustworthy? Is it secure and encrypted? Is it something that, you know, why are people hesitant to use it? I mean, what exactly, why is it so trustworthy? So it's it one it's secure and it's encrypted and the, the 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 beauty with blockchain is that the larger the blockchain becomes the more secure it becomes and and what i mean by that is is that because it's decentralized it's all it's going to be very 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 difficult to hack because if you want to hack one of these one of these blocks one of these networks you have to hack every single person's node within that network. Which essentially is someone with a computer or a powerful ASIC yes. or whatnot who's a part of this network. And since we don't know those thousands of yes. people who are running those computers, how do you hack it, right? Exactly. So uh, It's so encrypted, this, so you have no idea. So that's why it's so trustworthy. And so if I was a business owner, right, and, and you approached me and said, hey, you own a Fortune 500 company and, and you should use blockchain technology because of this, what, what would be those business benefits? So the the business so the way the way the mark the way the industry is going is that the power is 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 transferring to the Gen Zs and to the millennials and these Gen Zs and millennials are are researching the organizations in which they purchase from right so they want to know whether or not an organization is sustainable they want to know whether or not these organizations are contributing to 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 ethical practices they want to know if the organization is given back to the community right so so they want to so these consumers want that transparency and if you are putting those transactions on the blockchain, if you're putting those, those, those transactions and those business partners that you deal with on the blockchain that's overseas that are notorious for unethical practices, like in China, Bangladesh, all of those, India, all of those countries, and they can see that, yes, they are indeed, they are indeed, you know, uh, pra having sustainable practices, now those consumers are more are more willing to 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 purchase your products because the companies who do that the companies who are who are who are transparent they're buying from those companies they're buying from the patagonias they're buying from the ikeas they're buying from the levi's interesting yeah and you know? it's funny because I, I had a question that was how can blockchain help the world and it sounds like everything you just said is how blockchain can help the world it, it basically gives accountability Yes. To a lot of companies, which, you know, like you said, a lot of these millennials and Gen Z, they want to know that whoever they're buying from, it's a sustainable company who's free, you know, fair trade, whatnot, mm -hmm. um, best practices type of thing. And the blockchain can help do that, it sounds like. So that kind of answers that question. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to use blockchain technology, are there requirements? There, 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 aren't, there aren't requirements now. Let me back up. <laughs> They're, they're, <laughs> they're blockchain as a service uh, providers out there where it's essentially like a plug and play solution. Now you can create your own blockchain solution, but essentially you're reinventing the wheel. Now, some organizations out there are kind of that, that niche type organization. Um, I'm actually working, I'm actually working with two blockchain startups in the fashion industry, you know, where we're, we're tracking and tracing, you know, the, the raw materials, you know, in, 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 in the Caribbean, in, in overseas and things like that to demonstrate to say, hey, we have, we have ethical suppliers, 
we're getting our cotton from organic sources and things like that. Interesting. You know, to say to say yes, you're yes, you're paying you're paying you know a an, an increased price, but here's why. Right here's why. You know, we're not we're not greenwashing where some of these organizations are saying, oh, this is organic food. Oh, this is this is fair trade. Well, it's not really fair trade. They're just hopping on this sustainability bandwagon. We're just hopping on this green bandwagon, right? But whenever they get caught, you know. And that's where blockchain comes in. That's really interesting. I didn't think about it that way. And uh, of course, you know, we we talked about Bitcoin is kind Mm -hmm. of synonymous with blockchain. Cryptocurrency, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of lives on uh, on blockchain. So how does Bitcoin use blockchain in particular for people who don't know? So, so block again. Blockchain is that is that decentralized is that decentralized network in which Bitcoin is built on. So you have all of these different nodes, where that have to essentially approve that that transaction. So it's consensus based. What kind of transactions are are you talking about? So whenever you're perform whenever you're performing that that Bitcoin that Bitcoin transaction, that's what I'm referring to when we talk about Bitcoin. So like buying, selling, trading, transferring, correct, change to wallet, wallet to so that kind of thing. Any kind of those has to correct. go through. So each one of those different transactions has to be entered into a blockchain. Yes, and that, and it's all all of that's trackable. It's all trackable. That's interesting and immutable, so it can't be deleted. It's there forever. Right. So that's it. It's like a, it's like almost like a, like the constitution, you write it down, it's in the museum and then that's it. There is the constitution, right? You see it. Yes. That's interesting. Uh, so the, the other, the other day I had someone ask me a question that I really didn't have the answer to. And I'm curious to see if you, you do. And he said to me, I still don't quite understand why blockchain is necessary. If businesses have been using databases for years, decades and whatnot. And, and, and he says like, why, why should I use blockchain technology if I can just use a database? He's like, I don't see the difference between them and why do I need to use it? Why is it better? And, and I really, I was like, you know what? Then don't use it, but you know, there's gotta be an answer, right? Why is blockchain better than database? So what I would say, I would say most importantly is the transparency. It's a transparency with those end users, but I didn't, I didn't explain the transparency to the business partners. And another thing I didn't, I didn't discuss is, is the, the concept of what we refer to as smart contracts. So, so smart contracts are essentially self-executing contracts. And, and whenever I explain smart contracts to organizations, I say smart contracts kind of essentially get rid of, of my payment terms. So if I if 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 you're my vendor, and we we reach an agreement to say okay we're creating a smart contract for a hundred thousand dollars. Whenever I need whenever I need materials, it just it just triggers that smart contract and just like that, I cut my PO. You get paid. Right now now I talked about smart contracts just last year on my TED talks, and smart contracts are almost becoming obsolete. Because now we have intelligent contracts where intelligent contracts essentially will, 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 will automate this entire process where we're using this, this uh, Internet of Things and, and Industry 4.0 and things like that where I can, I can hook up a sensor in my manufacturing facility. And, once, and what, let's just say that hypothetically I'm, I'm, I'm using milk. Milk's my raw material. Once I fall below that particular sensor, that sensor triggers my ERP system. Because I have that smart contractor blockchain uh, uh, integrated with my ERP system, it cuts that PO automatically, and then it, automa- then it automatically pays you. And something important about that too is that it just completely eliminates the need for like the mountain of paperwork that usually comes along with these transactions, right? Because it's all embedded, mm-hmm. uh, the financial piece, Paying, you know, paying the seller and the buyer submitting the money in escrow, um, the paperwork involved. I mean, it just eliminates all that, right? So this is like a huge li- uh, weight lifted off of people's shoulders too, right? In terms of uh, yeah, so and it, and it eliminates the errors as well. I mean, just think, just think if I'm using if 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 I'm uh, if, if I have someone like, let's just say Tesla, 
let's just say like screws for Tesla. I don't know. Work with me here. <laughs> let's just let's just say Tesla. All the gigafactories that that Tesla is gonna gonna have in the next couple of years, right? And and they have intelligent contracts, and and they have it based on weight. So once it falls below a certain weight, that smart contract automatically executes. And now that that screw manufacturer for Tesla automatically gets paid, that PO automatically gets transacted. Wow. That's amazing. That would be such a huge, you, you just eliminated a lot of jobs there. <laughs> because, of the, because, you know, the guy's got to write the PO, the other guy's got to check the inventory, the other guy's got to do this, and the other guy's got to do that. And now you're saying, no, nope, it's all done automatically. That's, I mean, it's incredible, right? It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think it's great. And, and, you, and you bring up a good point, too. That's the next frontier, right, is, is you know, AI and intelligent systems and whatnot. Humans went from shells to metals, mm -hmm. metals to debt, debt to crypto, and now crypto to what? It's, I would say, I would say we're still we're still in the early stages of crypto. We're still in the early stages of AI. We still don't know what the full capability of these of these solutions are. You know, I feel I still think we're I still think we're years away from fully understanding it from a, from an industry perspective, right? I'm dealing I deal primarily with the industry. Now, now I would say that I would say that I would say that AI kind of has kind of taken over within the last couple of years. And and blockchain blockchain was the next biggest thing was the next was the, was the next thing smoking a couple of years ago in, in, in from an industry perspective right just take right. take take Bitcoin out of it now 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 a lot of organizations are adopting AI and I would say that once you have this wide adoption of artificial intelligence now we're going to get that integration of artificial intelligence with the blockchain and I think that that's going to be a massive game changer. Now, I do want to say that I speak at a lot of conferences uh, globally in terms of blockchain, in terms of artificial intelligence. And one thing I do want to, to say is that when I say AI, I say augmented intelligence. We are not, we are not in the artificial intelligence where, where, where these systems, these machines are going to make the decisions on their own. They are going to assist in our decision making. They are going to make those those employees' jobs easier. They are going to create new new opportunities for those employees. A uh, perfect example: I I, um, I was on a panel discussion with a with a vice president of a insurance company where they insure. So they would they would have people walk on the roofs of Home Depots, Lowe's, Walmart's, and and things like that. But they said that. With the adoption of drones and artificial intelligence, those guys who are walking on the roof, they're flying drones now. They're drone pilots. They're almost get, they're getting paid almost double. We didn't fire a single person, and we had to pay them more because drone pilots are in high demand right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, True. so so I think it is 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 creating is creating more is creating more additional opportunities. Now I do I do say I deal well a lot with manufacturers and distributors, and I do say that yes, you're going to have resistance, but those who are resisting, yes, they yes they went they may get replaced, right? But but a lot of manufacturers that I deal with, those people who who have spent their entire careers on the manufacturing floor, they're reaching retirement age. And these and these manufacturing and, and and small small I deal with small and medium manufacturers and distributors, right? I'm not I'm not talking about Amazon. I'm um, so 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 for these you know these small and medium manufacturers and distributors, they're having a tough time finding finding employees. So they have to depend on this automation. They have to depend on on things like this, like these intelligent contracts to do these all these all these automated automatic transactions, you know. So that's where the future is going. As you can see, there's this huge bull market right now. Uh, a lot of um, massive, <laughs> ma massive bull market. We're at $28,000 today per Bitcoin. And there's a liquidity crisis, right? There's not enough Bitcoin to go around anymore like there used to be because the supply is not, it's dwindling and the, the demand is really high. Um, do you see this liquidity crisis and the effect on its price being an issue? Do you see, uh, you know, what do you think the future, the next, you know, five years or next year? Uh, in terms of what's happening in the market because of, you know, investors really jumping in hard now and everyone's finally kind of embracing 
um, you know, the hedge against inflation and the store value and all that. So what, what are your thoughts on the whole liquidity crisis? I think that, I think that the price of Bitcoin is going to go higher because it's, it's becoming, it's becoming more accepted and it's, it's, it's becoming easier for everyone to, 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 to join in this, in the, in this, in this game we're, 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 we're in right now. I mean, I just, I just got an email to say I could, I could buy Bitcoin on PayPal. Yeah. That's I was like, what? 350 million people can buy it on PayPal now. Yeah. That's that was, a game changer. Yeah. It's huge. And I feel that's going to drop the price up and I don't, I don't, I don't see. Yeah, I know. I well, just put it this way. I've been, I've been, I've been actually doing some more investments in Bitcoin within the last couple of weeks. So, so I think that I think that the price, I think the price is going to go up on on Bitcoin. And again, that's that's something that that I mean, I think I mean even even all of even all of the even all the investors is are 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 investing in it right now. Yeah. You know, so I think I think it's going to go up. I'm very I'm very bullish on. You're very um, bullish. I am I'm too. very bullish on 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 crypto right now. But you know, there's a lot of bears out there, and there's also a lot of haters, right? People who just don't quite get Bitcoin or crypto or blockchain, and they're more stock minded. You know, Wall Street brokers, people who are just very traditional, and they say, "Oh, it's a scam. It's a Ponzi. It's a Ponzi scheme. Bitcoin's going to go to zero one day, and you're going to be left holding the bag." And, and and that's a real question. Do you think Bitcoin will ever actually go down to zero? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Well, it, because so so we're here we're here in the U.S. and and the U.S. is always the last to adopt things like this. You know, Bitcoin or uh, blockchain had so from an industry perspective, you know, Australia, uh, Europe, they've been integrating blockchain within the industry for years, and we're just now talking about it in the U.S. You know, those, those there, there's investors, there's investors overseas that's been investing in Bitcoin for years. And now, and if you think about it, it's now just gotten big in the U.S. I mean, wide adoption in the U.S. just last two years, yeah. right? We're late. We're late to the game. We're late to the game. You know, so I don't, I don't think it's going to go, I don't think it's going to go to zero. Um, <laughs> so I, let, 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 let the haters hate. I'll just get rich. <laughs> <laughs> i'm right there with you man and speaking of getting rich let's say uh you know you're a business owner right and for example i got a buddy in new york who owns a pizza shop right he makes these really artisanal pizzas like super nice fancy ones say he wants to make pizzas freeze them ship them and, ha and have it all working on a blockchain and, mm -hmm. and take smart contracts and all that like how, how would that work how would you do that so, so they have, they have things again, they, there's, there's block, there's blockchain as a service solutions out there. And there's also blockchain, what they, what they call blockchain forks, where you can kind of fork off of, of a, of a certain, of a certain blockchain. Um, but, but the, but the. So but he can, the, he can do like a pizza chain, like a pizza coin. And then like, mm -hmm. and, ha and, and how would the transactions work exactly? So, so I, I was like, so in, in food and food and beverage, it would be more of a smart contract where I would, I would, I would, I would say I would be contracted with for $50,000, if you will. Right. And, and that's how those transactions would perform. Now, now when I talk about blockchain, the smart, the transactions, like the financial transactions are going to be done on, 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 on with a smart contract. The tracking and tracing is going to be on the blockchain where I can track every, I can track where that raw, where those raw materials come from. So let's say that if he has like vegan, you know, vegan, you know, uh, 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 ingredients on the pizza. I keep you know, telling them to make those, man. I keep telling them to make me some plant-based stuff. It's huge. <laughs> a pizza Hut's doing it right now. Yeah. Well, he needs to start doing it for me. <laughs> yeah. Pizza, pizza Hut's doing it for, with, with, with beyond meat, you know, so, okay. so he could track and trace to say, yes, this is, this is truly vegan. You're like, forget what all these other guys in, in New York saying, this is vegan. It's on the blockchain. You go on my website and you can track and trace where all my raw materials are coming from. See, that's the game changer for mm. some of these organizations. And, and so, so that, and that's huge for like the, uh, for like uh, diamonds, 
So you're able to track and trace, you know, that these aren't conflict, conflict diamonds and things like that. So they, they do that a lot. Uh, it's, uh, all of uh, Louis Vuitton, all of those, all, all of those high end apparel, uh, um, uh, uh, organizations are putting putting those transactions on the blockchain because of because of counterfeiting and things like that um blockchain is big it's big in the uh, aerospace industry uh so so in the aerospace industry because any kind of engineering change you know has to be hand delivered to these manufacturers or you have to get you have to hand deliver this the the a, a usb file where you go in this back room and 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 plug it in and update the transactions. If this is encrypted, if it's on the blockchain, that that gets rid of that. That saves that saves our tax dollars, taxpayer dollars. Right. Right. Just by putting it on the blockchain. So so a lot of uh, there's there have been there have been some um, some discussions with the with the federal government on putting some of those transactions on the blockchain. Yeah, and I've been hearing, that's the kickback I've been hearing from people who are worried about more privacy concerns. We've already given up um, our privacy to Google and Facebook and, and everybody else out there. Like, we are now the product, right? Our data is the product. Yeah. And, and so doesn't, doesn't blockchain kind of infringe further on people's privacy and make it even worse for people who are afraid about their privacy? Or does it help us? So, so, and that's another thing where we have to, we have to talk about, we have to talk about what work with the government to understand, you know, what are the regulations with these, with these types of technologies. Um, I know that, I know that the, the UK or yeah, the EU has, has uh, created new, new regulations in terms of, in terms of personal privacy uh, transactions and things like that, where you have to, where you have to opt in you know, to, 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 to sharing that information and things like that. Uh, there's an organization in China. Yeah. T in China called Tencent. Tencent in China is even bigger than Facebook yeah, it's huge. and Google. It's massive, you know? So, so um, yeah. So I think that we, there's, there's a lot of unanswered questions there. There's a lot of unanswered questions there. It's, 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 it's questions I can't answer at this time, at this given point in time. But that's one thing that that's been, especially with, especially with artificial intelligence, that's a big topic of the discussion in the industry. Yeah, I think we're all curious to find out where blockchain is going, artificial intelligence is going. I mean, eventually, hopefully within our lifetimes, we'll witness the singularity, which is going to be, you know, a complete explosion in, in, in things to come. And uh, I guess we'll find out what happens. Hopefully, we'll get to see it, right? Absolutely. While we're still getting rich. While we're yeah, while we're still. Hopefully, one day we'll just scan our wrist with a little chip that has Bitcoin in it. Yeah. <laughs> to pay yeah. for things. Well, well, I know, I know. I, you know what? You you laugh, but we're gonna be there. I don't, I don't know. We're gonna, we're gonna be there. I don't know. <laughs> or just look look in my eye and scan my eye yeah, and I, my Bitcoin. That, yeah. <laughs> one of these days. Awesome, Justin. This has been highly informative. I think a lot of people are going to really get some, some gems out of this interview. And um, I look forward to seeing some feedback from people and hearing what they have to say about what, uh, what, what your thoughts are on blockchain and, and crypto and uh, things to come in the future. Thanks again yeah. for coming. Thank, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Appreciate it. Thanks.